Hello, I'm Paul Beckwith. I'm with the University of Ottawa Laboratory for Paleoclimatology. In the last few videos, I've been talking about the heat waves that have been causing, wreaking havoc uh, around the planet, um, not just in the Northern Hemisphere, but all over. And it's not just the heat exhaustion and heat strokes and mortalities that are, um, that are, that are discussed but I also talk about some of the other effects to do with ozone, fewer babies, uh, the babies that are born um, are not as healthy, et cetera, things like that. But in this video, I'm gonna focus on these torrential rains in, in Japan and the impacts um, to Japan, uh, not just from massive flooding, but uh, massive landslides causing large numbers of deaths. So I'm gonna talk about that in this video just get the lights. Okay, so this is um, my uh, Facebook page and I've been posting quite a few things on the heat wave but also on, on landslides and uh, things like that. So Japan has been seeing record rainfalls and very, very high death tolls in the last few days. So let's have a look at the, um, if you just go, if you're on Twitter and you just go to the hashtag Japan floods and just look at the stories um, under that hashtag and this is an ongoing um, story. I mean, the death toll keeps rising. They're only getting to some of the remote areas to, um, you know, see the impacts of torrential rains and uh, landslides and you know how it's taken out buildings and affected people. Um, this is a recent uh, article um, in Japan's, uh, one of Japan's newspapers, 105 dead, 87 missing floods and landslides ac across Western Japan. Okay, just give me a second here. For some reason, um, I'm, I'm having a problem here. Dirty mouse. There we go. Slow computer. Okay, um, another article. This is a Reuters article. Um, and uh, you know, they haven't assessed the overall economic impact. But one of the problems is you get cascading problems. So we had torrential rains in Japan. Uh, we had, so basically that water gets into the soils and instead of having air pockets and pores uh, of air inside the soils, you, those pores fill with water. The ground gets saturated. It's therefore much heavier as a result. So if it's soil on a steep slope, then it's heavier and there's lubrication from the water and it just starts sliding downhill, causing a landslide. Now, the rain's tapered off and now we're, uh, we, have a, we have very hot temperatures, well above 30 degrees Celsius or 86 Fahrenheit. So now um, there's, there's fears of heat stroke in areas that are cut off from power or water. So many areas are, you know, no power for air conditioning, no water for drinking, and uh, you know, people have no way to, to cool themselves. So it's one thing compounding onto other things. Um, okay, so uh, this is just uh, some of the, you know, uh, large numbers of people affected and the government officials have canceled their trips, et cetera. There's been some industries like Panasonic and Daihatsu that have, have um, cut shifts and had problems with supply, et cetera, um, and so on. Okay, so large economic impacts, but they haven't been tabulated yet. So let's have a look at what's been going on to cause that. So just Google Earth Null School, okay? And what you do is then you click on Earth and that where I'm looking in the air, I'm looking at, uh, these are 250 millibar winds we're looking at, and I selected the overlay, overlay 3HPA, 
okay? This is the next three hour precipitation accumulation. Okay, so, so it's showing the accumulation of precipitation of rain that's expected in the next three hours. So here's, uh, if we just go to, uh, let's just look at the winds first. Okay, um, you know, if we just look at something here. Okay, so here, here's Japan. So most of the problem here is in the southwest part of Japan. And let's go back to our air and uh, 3 HPA and 250 millibar winds. Okay, so the jet stream, you can see the jet stream coming across here. Okay, now the precipitation here is at the bottom part of it. And let's have a look. This is um, July 4th. Uh, 20.00 local time and we can cycle through so what you can see is you can see these areas of there's already high precipitation going on here let's go back a day okay uh, so let's now cycle three hour increments and what you can see is you can see the precipitation is starting here just off the coast of Japan but it's still very light it's starting to get heavier Okay, July 4th. Okay, now it's starting to get heavier and build up. And I'm just going to keep cycling. So keep your eyes on this region here. Like have a look at this yourself. Just Google Earth Null School and click on Earth and set up these parameters and have a look yourself at what's going on here. Okay. So they're getting, there's lots of rainfall here. Look at this, this uh, high precipitation level. You can click here and, you know, 48.7 millimeters. That's expected in the next three hour period from when this snapshot was taken. Okay, there is even higher here, 85 millimeters. Okay, um, and just have a look in that region. Okay, so there's some shifts, but there's there's tremendous um, so there's tremendous moisture coming in. It's hitting the elevated land in Japan. The air is forced to rise. The water vapor is condensing into the clouds and uh, forming the precipitation. Okay, and now July seventh, it's over. So basically, about three days or so, you know, extremely high precipitation. Now. This uh, high precipitation then gets into the soils and ca causes landslides. So these are some of the different types of landslides here. If, if, I, if you go to Google, Google uh, images. So this is Google images. I'm just looking at causes of landslides. I just typed in that as a search. And uh, these are the image that have, images that have come up. So we have uh, falls, rock falls basically. We have columns here that are toppling, we have slides, we have a spreading, or we have actually a flow uh, going on. So here is some of the causes of slope failure. So you have these bedding planes of rocks and in, in between, so these are surfaces that separate a layer of stratified rock or bed from another. Okay, one layer type of rock, another type of rock. There's a lack of frictional resistance between the bedding planes often, and uh, that can cause an instability in the slope. Of course, the steeper the slope, the more unstable it will be. There's a lack of vegetation on this hillside. Vegetation, especially the roots of trees and shrubs and things like that, it holds the soil in place and makes it very resistant to erosion. It also takes up the water in the plant. So if there's no vegetation there, the roots aren't holding the surface together. Now, if you have a sudden shock or jolt, like an earthquake, hurricane, uh, volcanic eruption, passage of heavy trucks, blasting, okay, things like that, they can trigger a movement, a sudden movement of mass in the soil or on the slopes, okay, a sudden shock. Um, these are joints and fractures. Now, if you have excessive water or an inadequate drainage, then that just saturates the soil. Soil is now heavier than it was when it was didn't have the water content. 
um, and now it's heavier so it can start to move. Also the water can lubricate and loosen the soil composition and uh, so, so if there's excessive water, inadequate drainage during heavy rains, the soils are saturated, water goes in between the grains of the soil, the earth is a lot heavier and it's prone to movement or landslides. Different types of soil have different characteristics when it comes to the frictional resistance to erosion or the co cohesion between the grains. Okay, they, they can be electrically charged and held together, the grains, um, water can get in there and just basically um, make them, make the soils able to flow, actually. Okay, so there's lots of good stuff here. There is a PowerPoint here and I'm gonna go over it quickly. Um, so landslides, okay, so this is a good presentation from 2014 by Alex K. George. Okay, and again, if you just Google Google images, look at causes of landslides. This is a presentation here, causes of landslides. This is a slideshow that I'm just gonna show you. Okay, so landslide, basically mass movement of rock, debris, or earth down a slope. And it includes a broad range of motions, so falling, sliding, flowing, under the influence of gravity, dislodging earth material. So very common in earthquakes. Very common if there's floods or prolonged rainfall. Um, if a volcano goes off, the shock wave can um, cause the landslides. Often you get landslides of the material that is on the cone of the volcano. If it's a stratovolcano, very steep slope, the volcano goes off, you can get landslides right on from the actual volcano. Or if there's heavy rain, that can trigger a landslide. And then if the volcano is primed to go, the release of pressure can um, allow it to erupt. Okay, so, so these are some of the features, uh, just some of the definitions, you know, the debris trail, the source areas or zone of depletion, different cracks and different, uh, you know, terms like this is a scarp, a cliff, the main cliff, and then a flatter area of the head, and then another scarp, and then... So what you're getting is lateral uh, shear. Um, okay, so these are some of the different types. Um, you know, you can have the rock falls, you can have creeps, you can have just a toppling of the cliff, you can have a translation of all the material, you can have a rotation of the material, um, or just a lateral spread on, on uh, relatively flat uh, ground. Okay, so the causes, well, you need gravity, of course, more effective on steeper slopes, higher risk of landslides, weak sensitive or weathered materials, heavy and prolonged rainfall. So this is a case in Japan, rapid rise in the water level, saturation of the soils, and then the landslides. Earthquakes, you know, anything that caught, where the plate tectonics moves the soil uh, that covers it, also moves um, forest fires, can cause erosion, um, forest fires, they can get rid of all the trees and vegetation on a slope. Then the slope is very susceptible to erosion, um, and then there can be a high, much higher risk of landslides on those sort of slopes. So this is something that California it has to be very careful with and watch. And we've had some landslides there in the areas that were previously hit by forest fires. Volcano, they of course they kill vegetation over extensive area, they spread the volcanic rocks and then when there's a, in the rainy season, over that area you can get landslides occurring, waves on a beach, freezing and thawing, depending on where you are. Um, also, people can change the natural, if you change the natural drainage lines on slopes, for example, if you do terracing or contour bounding, or you fill in a stream and build a house, then you're asking for trouble, okay? Um, you're changing the natural flow of the water, and that can lead you to problems. Um, so here, you know, of course, if your settlements are on steep slopes or at the base of slopes or at the mouth of streams emerging from a mountain valley, you can have a problem. So India is a big problem. Um, and these are some of the countries, the yearly losses. So Japan, um, Japan is right up there. It's the highest on the list. They have, um, that's 4.7 billion dollars, basically, of, of yearly losses uh, due to landslides and things. Okay, well, thanks for listening.